Hello, hello. I hope you're all well. Um, sorry I haven't been back to do the tutorial I really should be doing. Um, we've been extremely busy here at the minute. Um, but I'm going to come and do a quick create for the Nature's Remedies journal. And it's based on um, a tutorial I watched from Angie, who is Mountain Girl Studio. She is absolutely amazing. I've got to tell you, go and check her out. I'll put the link down below. Um, she made these little metal um, charms using um, uh, soda cans or fizzy drink cans. Now, the problem I had uh, with my fizzy drink can is no matter how hard I tried, I could not get it flat. It was still bendy. Um, and I also, um, they kind of, in the UK, I don't know if it's a thing, but they seem to be coated with like a plastic on the inside and it just didn't seem as good and as nice as the ones Angie made. So the first thing I did was have a look for the tape that Angie used and I just searched aluminium tape on Amazon. They had two widths, um, but it is super, super thin. Now, when you layer this up, it takes a lot of layers to get any kind of stability to it. So I'm going to show you how I've been doing. It's a variation on Angie's method. Um, Angie's look fantastic. These don't, mine don't look quite the same, but they're similar. Now, um, I take the tape and sandwich it between a piece of cardstock and this is I think this is 180 but you could use an even or it might be thicker than that actually I have no idea I just pulled it out of my stash you could use a thinner cardstock because this does make it very very thick or sturdy but that's fine because that's the kind of look I want so what I do is cut the tape peel off because it's sticky it's got a sticky back to it so, I mean, it's pretty awesome stuff. Try and line up along the edge. And the better you line it up, the less of the tape you actually waste. So you can see I've got a little bit to trim off there, but not too much. Now I'm going to trim that before I put the other side on. So you can see how thin this tape is. It just tears like almost like um, kitchen foil. I mean, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure if you use the right glue, you could probably use aluminium foil. It's probably not as easy to keep the wrinkles out, but then, you know, maybe that would add to the, to the effect. So you could easily, I think, use a kitchen foil. Okay, so that side's done. I'm now going to do the other side. I think the pollen count's quite high today. Very itchy eyes. Okay, and I pulled out my first radish today. My first radish, that's my crop harvest my first crop so now I'm just like oh we'll have to have salad so I can use some of my first radishes it's the first time I've really tried to grow any food other than tomatoes so that's quite exciting okay so now I'll trim that got a little bit of a sticky edge here somewhere so Okay, this is way more than I'll actually need for today. And then I'm going to trim. There we go. So I'll probably spend a little bit more time doing this. But obviously, this is a quick create. So, okay, that's step one. I've now got my... Um, foil done. So I've got a couple of pieces from the Nature's Remedy Kit and I've printed these at I think it was 75%. I'm just going to bring the camera down a bit. Okay, so I've got my little pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is ink them. And 
I'm not I'm not going to I'm just inking the very edges of these really so yeah I think these were printed at 75% so they are smaller actually I think the little these ones may have been printed at 50% but this I think the other two were 75 I mean it's just a case of playing around with them they're fine if you print them full size actually um, but I wanted to use these as little charms so I shrunk them down a bit now I'm using Fabri-Tac to stick these I found it um, I find it a little bit easier to use than I'm not gonna stick something there I've got something under the tape I want to make sure I avoid that bit just push that down okay I do work on the edge of the of the tape um, once I've cut them out I expect it's very very loud and my breathing is probably right in the microphone of the phone Now you can kind of decide how much of an edge you have. On some of them I've cut them very, very tight and on some of them I've given them quite a good amount of, of, of metallic edge. These just look, um, they obviously don't sound metallic. They're not like, you know, they don't, um, they don't have, oh, sorry. They don't have a metallic sound if that makes any sense to you at all. I know what I mean. <laughs> um, but they do have the metallic look and they're a little bit more heavyweight than just having um, having them mounted onto a piece of cardstock. So they're quite, um, they're quite nice. I really like them. Put that on there. And this does not take too long to dry. I just hope, I mean, I've used this glue on all of the ones I've made. I did try glossy accents on the first one, um, but it just kept sliding around everywhere and taking, took a long time to dry. So I'm just gonna cut around them. I might actually trim this one down a little bit further in a minute. Just cut. Okay. They're good fun. They're easy to sit and sit and work on. I've made quite a lot of them. Okay, that one's nice and easy. And then I'll just trim this one a little bit more. Now that looks perfectly cool, just as it is. But I'm gonna do something else to them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just to soften the edge a little bit, I'm taking a nail file and just give these a little file around the edge. Um, the tape kind of, it's hard to explain until you feel it. You can feel the little ridges of the tape where you've cut them with the scissors. Um, and the nail file just kind of softens that off a little bit. And, it's, and it also just kind of blends the tape with the cardstock a little bit. So it takes the ink really nicely. Okay, so these look brilliant. I love them. I love them as they are. Um, but I'm going to do... Um, another step to these so the first thing is the back of this looks kind of nice and sparkly new bright shiny metal so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my nail file and I'm just going to scuff it up a little bit so it doesn't look so new so it looks like it's been knocked around for several years can you see 
Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is just get rid of some of the... Now, um, I'm fairly new to using alcohol inks. Um, the tin cans that I, I cut up, um, I covered those in alcohol ink and had a bit of a play around with it. Um, but I've decided on doing something a little bit more subtle on the back of these. So... Um, I've got a little makeup sponge and I've got um, some blending solution and I've got a rather manky sponge um, and you're probably all going to shower me going clean it or whatever you need to do but I don't want to waste too many of these like I said I'm pretty new to them so I'm going to use the lighter one latte uh, alcoholic I don't have any gloves they're a little bit hard to get hold of at the moment don't know if you've noticed um, so Shout at me if you like, but I did manage to get it off my fingers. Just took a while. <laughs> but, okay, I'll show you exactly what I do. So I'm going to, and it's probably not going to work now because it kind of only worked about 50% of the time. I'm going to take my sponge or whatever this is, little blending tool, pop a bit of ink on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go around the edge. Luna, don't. There's a there's a little flying thing just come through the window. And she's now perched on the edge of my desk in hunt mode, but she's absolutely pants at hunting. She's not a hunting cat at all. There's nothing elegant about her. She's not dainty on her feet. <laughs> she's kind of, she just loafs about. Okay, so this is um, probably where you're all going to be shouting at me, going, what are you doing? That's not how you use it. So I've still got a bit of ink on there. I'm going to wipe it on here and then put a tiny bit of, tiny, tiny bit and just kind of wipe it off because I don't want it overpowering that colour. Just really gently just rub the sponge over and it just gives a little bit of a tint but not too much and then when that's dry I will then go over it again around the edges. So same here. Just lightly, I mean I did put literally a drop on here, just rub that over. I don't know if there's right or wrong ways to use this stuff because you know, I'm not a big alcohol ink user. That one's slightly darker than the others, but that's okay. It's probably still enough on here. I mean, those of you that know better ways of using alcohol inks, probably do a much better job but I'm quite happy with how these turn out that one's a little bit darker but that's good because we don't want them all to look the same and then I'm just going to go around the edges again actually what I might do is use the darker one so I'm going to change to my espresso Doesn't seem to be, probably haven't got enough ink. Actually, I'll start with that one because that's a bit drier. Stop chewing that, Luna, stop chewing that. That doesn't seem to be, why, why, why? Why is that not coming off? One more time. Ah, oh, there we go. I've got too much on there. Oh, that's interesting. I've got a little dollop of um, it's obviously because of the blending solution. Wow, that's quite interesting. I really like that. Sorry about my hands all in the way. Right, so 
I've now got this kind of effect. Now the last thing I'm going to do once that's dry is I'm going to grab my walnut stain. Now I mean I made several of these. I did a full a full strip, you know, stuck all of the labels on and was doing a full strip of them at a time. Um but I'm using my dark ink. This is still slightly wet and I'm just going to really go round the edge of that cardstock just to make sure there's no cardstock showing. Make sure that's nice and dark. I mean the ink has picked up most of that. Yeah, the darker ink has definitely covered most of it up. When I used the, the latte, um, there were still some kind of cream areas. There doesn't seem to be as many using that darker ink. Okay, so um, the next step is obviously not a difficult step at all. Um, but I've got my small hole punch. I did some... Let me see if I can find them. I did some where I put little eyelets in, like so. Um, but the eyelets are still quite large. And because this is quite thick, once you've got the cardstock and the tape, you don't actually need to have both. So I'm just literally going to punch my hole. Grab. A ring so I'm going to open up my junk ring slot that on And there you go that's your first one um really really quick you know that it really is a quick create and i'm loving the actual the back of these ones so i will finish those two shortly but i wanted to try one more thing um so the other thing i bought because i didn't want to be <laughs> wasting my time <laughs> with the tin cans that i couldn't get flat is i bought some of this stamping foil and this is perfect because it's like a tin can that's already been cut out flattened for you and it's blank both sides so this is perfect for me um and i'm just trying to find one i have already done so what i did is i took my little kind of label punch and pop that out now it does take a little bit of filing and flattening um what i did was took um an old bone folder because it's not going to be too good for it and i just kind of flattened around those edges a bit and it also scratches up the tin slightly um, now you can spend a little bit more time than i'm going to on this then where did the nail file go it can't have gone far oh who knows who knows? Right, let me. This one hasn't really got a lot left to it, and it's also got a lot of cat marks where she's chewed it. Um, that's why I got new ones. Um, but the same thing, kind of, because this is actual metal, it has got a bit of a sharper edge to it. So you need to spend a little bit of time kind of filing this down. So this is kind of a second quick create. This is not really the first one at all. This is something completely different. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab this mat. This mat is, I found perfect for this job. It is actually my vintage typewriter mat, but it's kind of a thick rubber. Um, a piece of foam or anything like that would work just as well. So I'm gonna put my little 
thing down. I've got one of these little, I don't know what they are, little pokey tools. Um, I got these from my mum. <laughs> my mum gave me these. And I've also got this little, I got this from Etsy. Um, so my first mistake was the first one I made, I made this way. Of course, um, it's going to be back to front. Although the other one I did put in a book plate, but I made it too big, so it didn't work. But I don't suppose it matters. It depends. All you need to decide is which end you want as the as the where you want your lettering to start. So I want it to start at this end. So I'm going to turn it upside down, and I want this back to front. So I want my letters that way round. Now, if I did it on the other side. Yeah, because I want it poking outwards. I want the embossing to be on the right side. So I just use this tool on this mat. I do want to get some of those brilliant um, things you hit with a hammer. You know, the little letters. Because they would be fabulous on something like this. Now, I didn't get the zero to work last time. And I, yep, it's not going to work this time either. So you can see just about there. I'm going to just go over that in one more time. Um, if I can line it up, that is. I mean, it's very hard to see. Okay. So, and then it's just a case of picking your number, whatever number takes your fancy. I might even be able to get the bigger. Let's go. 74. Some of the numbers work better than others. Um, I also have, for those of you in the UK, um, this ruler. This one is slightly bigger. Um, but this one came from Sainsbury's. Um, it's It says archive on it. I got the scissors to match, but the scissors were absolutely pants. But that came from Sainsbury's, any of you in the UK. So it says number 74. Uh, I think I might put one more number. One more number on there. Let's go zero. That's really hard to just make sure you're not going over the previous number. And I'm not worried about these being dead straight because it kind of adds to the really like that okay let me just get rid of that so again i'm going to start with my uh, latte put it on that side because i think that was the lighter side probably need another drop of my one drop of that alcohol ink oil uh, blending solution. It's quite flimsy, but that could be you could either put this onto, because you've used a punch, you could put this onto a piece of cardstock or you could put the string through so it looks like it's hanging but actually glue it down. But what I'm going to do next is just go with my darker ink around the edge of this. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Might mount it, might might not. Might double up the um, 
I might double up the metal and just the next one actually attached to the back but without being stamped without the embossing but there are loads of possibilities for that um let me have a look That one's just literally a plain one. Um, I was going to put this under a book plate, but it's too it was too big for one book plate I had and too small for the Tim Holtz one. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful when I do that in future. Um, but yeah, I think they're super cool. So thank you so much, Angie, for the inspiration for these um, and the tags, little labels, the charms. Now you've got your little tag. I mean, you could easily ink the back if you weren't going to glue it down somewhere. But there you go. I was really happy with, with how these turned out. And these are some of the others I did. And I also did a lo <laughs> load of um, labels in the same way. So tons of them. Um, and there's still more. And this one... I've left nice and shiny new, but this is just um, one of the stamps from the Nature's Remedies kit put straight onto that metal. So this one's not finished yet. I'm not quite sure um, what to do, how I'm going to go about this. Um, but yeah, these are great fun. So, you know, that's not really a quick, quick create. It's two quick creates in one video. But um there's loads of loads of possibilities, so enjoy and thanks again, Angie. I will see you all very soon. Bye.